Mumbai, a city where culinary traditions blend with modern innovation. As one of Mumbai's oldest Chinese families, the Thams have been a fixture in the city's dining scene for decades now. From their pioneering restaurant Mandarin in Kolaba to their newest venture Pompa in Bandra, the Tham family's impact on Mumbai's culinary landscape is profound. Hello and welcome to the week. This is Pooja and today we are in conversation with the Tham brothers, Ryan and Keenan. Welcome brothers. Thank uh, you. Hi. Share with us memories of growing up with your father, with your grandfather, anecdotes that you would want to share with us. That would be great to know something that is still there, fresh in the mind. Yeah, I think for me, fresh in mind is we used to uh, we used to go there post school some days, okay. um, and we used to sit on this table. My grandfather used to always be at, and we'd have a meal there, yeah. or late lunch or early dinner. Right. And my grandfather was very good at origami. Okay. So back in the day, we used to do some you know takeaway stuff in uh, this this paper that had Mandarin written all over it. Yeah, yeah. And he used to call for reels of it. And used to make funny, you know, shapes, uh, birds, ships, etc. <laughs> and I uh, used to really be in, in amazement of that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great yeah. memory. Do you learn the art also? Unfortunately, uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> Just very few basics initially. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing more than that. He is more of the artist than me. And all right. these yeah. okay. Not anymore though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did you always want to do this, both of you? And I mean, yeah. seriously, I mean, growing up, how was it? Obviously, you all have been in the family. This has yeah. been a family business. But did you all ever think that? I think restauranting for me was was mind? always part of our DNA as such. Yes, uh, of course. But but at one point, I almost became a scuba diving instructor when I was in Australia. Almost like went on that path and didn't come back. You know, I, was, I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> oh, okay. So that would have been different if I followed my passion. <laughs> but I still I still follow my passion, right. but just not right. professionally. Right. I do okay. it uh, recreationally. Right. Yeah. We've been going to our restaurants with our father from the time we could walk. Yeah, literally. yeah. So literally, yeah. From the restaurants and those days, the restaurants were run differently. The right. owner would be there, you know, ninety percent of the time every True. day, and True. he could not run more than one or two restaurants right. because yeah. we were physically present. So I knew this is what I wanted this to do. Uh, our higher education abroad right. was yes. yeah, hospitality yes. and restaurant management. Good. I don't think we were you know, ever wanted to do any any kind of. Nine to five kind of a job. Being in F and B, the timings and everything really right. you know, appealed to I us. I think at even in time. schools, everybody knew that you guys are gonna be the restaurateurs, right? I read somewhere a teacher asked you all what you all wanted to be, and both yeah. of you yeah, all said, "Yeah, yeah we, we want to run restaurants." Say, I mean, when I was yeah. in school at the fun fairs, I would set up a, a Chinese stall. I, really? so, <laughs> yeah, so I would do that. So, so it was there; it was ingrained in us. Yeah. <laughs> The Thames have carved out a prominent place for themselves in India's hospitality landscape. While many establishments have come and gone since, the Thames have consistently pursued expansive projects including Trilogy and The Good Wife in BKC. Their more recent ventures include Coco in Kamla Mills at Lower Parel in Mumbai and several outlets of food throughout Mumbai. Their latest achievement is Pompa, of course, a vibrant Mexican restaurant in Bandra that showcases their versatility and passion for culinary innovation. Why the name Pompa? What does it mean? What does it signify? I don't think it's English. Which language have you? Oh, it's Spanish. It's Spanish, oh, Spanish slang. Uh, yeah. It means flamboyant. Oh, okay. So that's what the whole brand was, is about. Uh, right. It's vibrant, it's flamboyant. Right. Uh, you know, when you and think of Mexican cuisine nowadays, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, now this made a comeback. Yeah. But automatically associated with tequila and a lot of fun and dance and right. colors. And, uh, yeah. we, wanted a, we wanted a name, uh, like most of our brands are single words um, and something that had a little ring to it, a uh, yes. bit of recall value, yeah. so it's easy to. Yeah. Kind of pronounce as well. Yeah, it's a nice snappy. Um, yeah. So it's yeah, I think Pompa fit. We had a lot of options uh, presented yeah. to us. Right. It wasn't easy, right. but we finally landed on uh, on Pompa right. for this one. Right. Yeah. And right. globally, you know, there are a lot of South American slash Latin American and Mexican right. joints that yeah. have come up and yeah. doing very well. And we felt Bombay is pretty much ready for a few of them. Okay. Right. And also, when you look at the landscape, you know, currently Mexican is probably just a online Swiggy Zomato QSR model. Uh, yeah. You don't have the fun bar with the good Mexican food and the finesse happening. Right. Yeah. So yeah. at Pompa, we try to create that vibe. Right. And uh, you know, we opened a li nice large space with some good Mexican food. 
and and the bars of of course at the forefront right right so since we've yes. launched it's yeah. been amazing you know yeah. it's been packed and uh, people were hungry for mexican cuisine yeah. they were coming out in 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 full force to try the food right. so bandra is a right destination i think for it's for probably the perfect the destination perfect. to experiment with things like with, this yes, yeah yes absolutely yeah, yeah. and especially with you know the spicy cocktails yeah. and tequilas and picantes and latin american music and dancers and you know it's it's a lot of fun a lot of fun at each step you have brought in your own um, uh, you know thought process yeah you know at your time in life where you all were tell us about what goes into launching a new restaurant or a project i think chronologically if you just go to see we opened henry tham just before trilogy which we didn't touch yes, upon yes yes so actually okay. ryan and myself we had come back from australia yes. we had studied in griffith university restaurant and yes. catering management we came back like two eager entrepreneurs <laughs> ready to get into business very young at the time yes yes and the first yes. thing we did actually was was add a <coughs> bar to the existing asian restaurant yeah. we had yes. and at yes. that point of time you know our entire age group was out a lot uh, you know at that house music was new at that point yes. yeah. and we wanted to put it put it at the forefront, forefront. So we did yeah. a lot of house music gigs we did yeah. a lot of blues nights there which is completely different to, different, to the house yeah. scene yeah. and we tried to sort of merge uh, modern cantonese food with a full bar vibe yes Absolutely. and that really became uh, iconic at that point of time yes. everyone was yes. just and hanging out yes. there yes and literally we were doing everything from you know taking reservations to bartending to managing oh, the yeah. place to yes. cashiering the, the night yeah, yeah. fixing the light bulb and you know, counting so, the liquor yeah. stock at the end on a saturday night and so uh, we were very yeah. hands on and we hands really on. put uh, uh, you know all the life and soul into that product yes and uh, so that's where our <coughs> actual journey began as as restaurant yes, that was your slash, first project yeah. of course and what did your father have to say to that what did he say <laughs> to your performance you know <laughs> so when we came back from australia henry tham the restaurant had just started yeah. without the bar without yes um we <laughs> quickly got bored and said that uh, you know let's put in a bar let's put in a dj let's get in some nightlife yeah, yeah. so he was all for it the mid you know he saw yeah. us wanting to do it and the drive in us yeah yeah Uh, he kind of figured that the concept would work. He just wanted it to come from us and to yeah. us to lead yeah. the right. the discussion or the initiative. And and we both were, you know, excited bunnies. <laughs> and he made sure we, there was no manager. He said, "You guys have to run, yeah. do so everything." We were there in a suit uh, every day, besides a Monday or a Tuesday, we would get one day off. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that was it. It was it. It went from strength to strength. It did really yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, and we sort of wanted to expand on that, but. more it was the bar side again hence right. we went further down the line right. uh, and went into the nightclub space nightclub space correct um, yeah yeah that was late 20s yes. early 30s yes. uh, to do that again we'd have to go back to our 20s i think <laughs> <laughs> but that was a very exciting time i think yeah. for us uh, yeah. you know as we said corporate boy is going to juhu juhu yeah yeah absolutely and, uh, oh and, and trying to pull the audience there yeah uh, was... we revamped the space at the sea princess hotel made it Made it, you know. We we had yeah. seen a couple of nightclubs globally, yeah. so yeah. at that time, to, I don't think many like hotspots were there. Yeah. Plus I mean, the lights that you see up, that you're on the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. That was the first <laughs> in in Bombay at that point, and okay. really stuck to the cutting edge music, right. and we were able to get in the the fun crowd. Right. And again, we were there doing everything, uh, you know, at odd hours, and we had a good run, good eight years. Right. Yeah. Okay. Then we moved on to to BKC, which right. was just about coming up coming as a corporate hub. Yeah. This is two thousand eleven, twelve, thirteen is when we opened the the Good Wives. Good Wives. Yeah. And uh, again, that was a step out of Asian food. That was a more European cafe with with right. a bar. Right. Uh, it was for the corporate crowd. It's supposed to be a neighborhood watering hole for BKC. Right. Uh, it turned out to be a little more than that eventually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which yeah. is After great. Kind of. Yes. Vibes, yes. Right. Yes. That was very new at that point yeah, in in yeah. in Bombay. It was. Yeah, the corporates were all coming in. And yeah. Yeah. The drinking yeah. culture globally, it's there. No, yeah. But but in Bombay, it was very relatively new. Yeah, it was more pubby. It was more conversational. <laughs> yeah. So it you was know? a step off from the nightclubs again. Yeah. Um. And then, of course, next in line came came Coco. There was this opportunity to. So by then, Henry Tham had closed down. Right. Uh, this is linked to, of course, yeah. the. Unfortunate terror attacks which happened yeah. right around there. Yes. So, by then Henry Tham had closed. We had Trilogy and Good Wife yeah. going on, and uh, we want to come back into Asian space, yeah, yeah. Uh, Asian food. Yeah. We were still, you know, young to do a bar. So, yeah. so this opportunity came up to do Coco here. Yeah. Uh, 
and so we launched the yeah. company we took on a yeah. few friends as partners yeah. and this uh, is quite a premium luxury dining space so i think in 2000 that was in 17 mind, right this one 16, 16 we opened, yeah, in, 16. We opened yeah. in 16 and yeah. at that point there was a big gap between uh, you know the five star and and the standalone in terms of the premiumness i think right. We could come in and create this product that would cater to the audience that are looking for non five star properties right. uh, in a standalone environment, give them that premiumness, as, and, and just not make it very, uh, very stiff. Right. Yeah. Keep it yeah. casual at the same time, and yeah. it was more about creating an experience. You know, it wasn't just about the food. Although the food yeah. was at the at the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we tied up with a friend, uh, Dimi, uh, who basically helped us create this wonderful cocktail menu at the bar. And we, we, we added our music element to it and it really picked off at that point. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a really place to be on yeah, a Friday and yeah. Saturday night and, and we really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. And w any one particular item, any one particular dish which you all really, which is your favorite, hmm. uh, maybe we could say at Coco and one at Fu or something like that. Sure. At yeah. Fu, so for me, it's a charcoal like? hargao, okay. which is um, basically a dim sum wrapped in. The, the coating is wrapped with charcoal okay. and uh, inside is prawn. Okay. It's my favorite by far. Okay. And mm. the, the other one at Coco? My favorite here is the, the sushi roll, the salmon and truffle roll. Uh, it's been on the menu since day one. Okay. And, uh, I just love that, that dish. <laughs> you guys must try it. Uh, okay. here. It's fantastic. The longevity of a restaurant, you know, like... Uh, yeah. restaurants come with a shelf? I think statistically, uh, you know, Restaurants come, yeah. some do well, some fail. Yeah. It, it's a high failure rate industry as people look at it. Yeah. But there are lots of iconic restaurants that have lasted, you know, 50, 70 years, 80 years. Like right. Camling, for example, Absolutely. was there for 55 yes. years. Yes. So I think at the end of the day, if you're consistent, yeah. number one, yeah. if you're always at the forefront of what's what's new yeah. and keep refreshing yourself yeah. Yeah. and, you know, competition will come and go. And, and, okay. and consumers will try other things, but they come back to you if you have a certain product that that's right. that's yeah. worth coming back to. So we invest yeah. all our time and energy in that. So. Yeah. It is it is tough uh, yeah. competition wise. There's very low barriers to entry yeah. for business. You don't yeah. need any certification yeah. or any license right. or anything like that. Um, there's no trademarking of your or there's no IP either yeah. around True. your food, your concept, yeah. your design, nothing. True. Uh, so in that sense, it's uh, there is a lot of you know price and discount seeking uh, yeah. customers also so overall there's a lot, lot yeah, uh, yeah but uh, there are many layers to it but yeah. uh, india is emerging you see That's every true. now and you know, things yeah. are getting better people yeah. are spending a lot more on lifestyle so i think we're in a good space and uh, right. you know keep working on the product keep evolving keep yeah. keep, keep the freshness yeah. In, yeah. in the yeah. brand all the time yeah, sure. uh, yeah. But over the years, have you seen a change in the customer, change in the the person who's coming into your restaurant? You know, in their tastes, in uh, in the in their uh, behavior, in the approach to food, basically, and well, the definitely. kind of cuisines that we are. So please tell us about that. What are your own well, observations been like? I think you know, as as time has gone by, people have traveled a lot, right? Yeah. The exposure to global experiences has grown tremendously. Yeah. So when they're going and seeking those experiences there, they come home, they want an authentic experience. Yeah. They want an international experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what uh, Sichuan or what roadside Chinese was back in the day, yeah, Indian yeah. Chinese to where it is today in, in Bombay itself. Yes. You can understand the authenticity path that people have gone on. Yes. And, you know, the customer base is very demanding. because they, they want a particular set of authentic cuisine and they will only go for that. Right, right. There is a they segment that wants to eat your Indian think, Chinese yeah. and all of that. And yeah. that's will continue. But um, yeah. as people travel, they, yeah. they just, they're just they just grasping so many new things. So many, yeah. And they, we have to deliver it here to them. The Than brothers have expertly balanced the bar and dining experience at Coco, ensuring that it never veers into the nightclub territory. Their focus has always been on making food the foundation of the venue. The food has to be as interesting and appealing as is the ambience where one is dining. Now, as Coco celebrates its ninth year this year and continues to thrive, the emphasis on exceptional cuisine remains paramount. Since its opening, they have consistently refined their menu, crafting new dishes that keep the culinary experience fresh 
exciting and appealing.